Hello, in this video I'm going to show you how you can essentially cheat legitimately when using the Casio class whiz to solve quadratic equations that factorise. So to understand how to do this we first need to consider uh, what you do in this situation here. Just solving an already factorised quadratic. Well, you would... So you've got a zero product, you've got x minus 4 times 4x plus 7 equals 0, so either x minus 4 is 0, or 4x plus 7 is 0. Now, um, make that into a 0. Uh, this means that x equals 4, and over here, 4x will equal minus 7, and therefore x will be minus 7 over 4. And there you have your two solutions. So the trick to using the class whiz to help here is, is actually to do that process that I've just done there backwards. So here is the type, the type of question you might get where you can use the class whiz to help. Now if it just said that, then there's nothing really to stop you from just jabbing that into your calculator and finding out what the answers are. But typically these questions say something like this. Show full algebraic working. In which case we're stuck if we don't know how to factorise. Now there, is, there are proper methods. There's a few, two or three methods that work for, for factorising um, expressions like that quadratic one there, but um, you can actually get around without having to factorise it kind of manually. So here's the trick. Um, you grab your class whiz and we're going to go to the, let's go down to the equation function solving feature. Uh, press equals to go into that part of the menu. It's a polynomial, that just means it's, well, it's clearly not simultaneous equations we're solving. It's polynomial. Um, it's degree 2, because the highest power on the x is, is a 2. So let's click on 2. And then it wants three values. Um, so it just wants the number of, it just wants the number of x squared, so that's 3. 3 equals. And it wants the number of x's, so that's positive 2 equals, and then it wants the final number, which is minus 8, so don't forget this minus, so minus 8 equals. Now when you press equals again, it gives you 4 thirds, it says x1 equals 4 thirds, let's just jot that down, zoom out a little bit. Um, I'm actually going to leave a space here, you'll see why in a moment. I'm going to write x equals 4 thirds. And if we press equals again on the class ways, it says x equals minus 2. So I'm going to write that over here as well. x equals minus 2. Okay, right, we can actually put the class ways to the side now. And we're going to go backwards and fill in the gaps. So hopefully I've left enough space. It might not seem like I have. But if you move this minus 2 to the other side, we get x plus 2 equals 0. And that's going to be one of our factors. If we rearrange this one, if we move the 3 up, we've got 3x equals 4, and then 3x minus 4 equals 0. So that becomes our other factor. And now, when you present what you can see there to an examiner, they are going to read that from the top down. So they're going to see that you've factorised it here and then they're going to see that you've set each of those brackets separately equal to zero and solved them to get the two final answers. They've got absolutely no idea that you've actually solved this problem in reverse.